Ginky made some of their best toys based around Gerry Anderson vehicles during the 60s and 70s. This one, the SPV, was one of their best selling toys of all time. But I have one question. Why did they make this? It's terrible. Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to Brooks Collectibles Shop and Toy Museum. We specialise in epic gifts and vintage toys. On this channel, I'll be bringing you the coolest gift ideas, along with product reviews, unboxing videos and toy histories. If that sounds like your kind of thing, then please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos too. In 1968, Dinky released their terrific trio of Captain Scarlet vehicles. The Spectrum Patrol Car, the Spectrum Pursuit Vehicle and the Maximum Security Vehicle. And it's the Maximum Security Vehicle that's really got me stumped. I have no idea why they made it. They should have made the Angel Interceptor, that great sort of aircraft that took off from the cloud base with Destiny, Symphony, Rhapsody and Harmony Angels all flying them. They were way cooler than this weird little car. But what we got instead of the Angel Interceptor was this. The Dinky Maximum Security Vehicle number 105, first issued in 1968 and deleted in 1975, as were the other two models in the range. Now, it, I think it only appeared in three ever episodes of Captain Scarlet, and so I don't understand why they made it as a toy. It, it was grey in the TV show as well, and it's white here, but Dinky are renowned for getting the colours wrong. Basically, that is all it does. You know, there's no sound, no noise. It's just a toy car. It's a very heavy car. In fact, there's a lot of metal in there. If that hit you in the head as a kid, it would probably have knocked you out. And inside here, you've got some little crates as well with radioactive gold in them. But other than that, it didn't really do a lot. Now, it must have been popular for them to keep it in production for seven years, but I just don't get it. I still would have made the Angel Interceptor. And what happened really is they left it up to Airfix to do that. And they produced it, I think in 172nd scale. Before that, it was made by Century 21 Comics in plastic, they're quite brittle and they're very expensive. And they're very cool too, if you ever come across one. But I think it would have made a great dinky toy. And I think it wasn't until about the early 2000s that Corgi made it in metal. So I think it's a real wasted opportunity there by Dinky. I'm filming Toy Tuesday from the shop floor at Brooks Collectibles, so you may hear the background noise of people shopping or even see them moving around. If you want to come and visit the shop or even the toy museum, then please check out our contact details. They're in the description below. Also in the description are affiliate links to some of the products mentioned in this video. So if you want to check out the current prices or see what Captain Scarlet collectibles are available to buy, then please check them out. The next Dinky toy in the Captain Scarlet range, I totally get. It's the Spectrum Saloon car, Dinky number 103. Now this was a four wheel drive, jet engine powered, four seater car with a top speed of 200 miles an hour. It's seen loads of times in the series, so it makes sense to make a toy of it. And as a kid in 1968, this must have seemed like a really cool thing because most of the cars on the road at the time, well, they just weren't that interesting. Now, it's a shame it didn't fire anything. The only feature it has is this weird noise it makes, which is, sounds like a friction motor. In fact, they had to put a note on the instruction leaflet inside the box to explain that it doesn't have a friction motor in it. And that's probably because people were returning them thinking the toy was broken. Like the MSV, this toy is a proper solid piece of metal as well. Again, I think they probably could have cut costs a bit and made it a little bit less robust. Although if you do take one of these apart, the interior is very, very flimsy, but the metal casting outside is very solid. And I think def Dinky definitely could have saved a few quid there. Considering five years after this model was deleted, they would be completely bankrupt and the Dinky we know would be gone forever. Before we get to the SPV, which is my favourite of all the Captain Scarlet toys, here's a quick top tip for you. If you've got any broken bits of plastic or missing missiles, if your old toys need new stickers or a reproduction box, then there's a brilliant website that you can go to to get all these spare parts. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. And the last car that Dinky made from Captain Scarlet and the Mistrons is probably its most famous and my personal favourite, the Spectrum Pursuit Vehicle. And as I said before, it was one of Dinky's best-selling models of all time probably a close second to Thunderbirds 2 and 4. The SPV was one of the stars of the show, hidden strategically all over the place in buildings, caravans or underground, I think even in boats. All you had to do was flash your ID and you could get your hands on one. And I think they were almost as indestructible as Captain Scarlet himself too. The only downside was you drove it facing backwards, which they kind of got sick of trying to explain in the show. But the best thing for me about the toy, it has a bit more functionality than the other two toys because it fires something. Now, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Oops. By pushing down the wheels at the front, 
the door pops open and then you push them again and the missile fires out, which is a really cool feature. And then if you press the button on the side here too, Captain Scarlet pops out and dangles down there. Now in the show, this was another two, 200 mile an hour well tank really, and I think it was amphibious too. And if memory serves, you could turn the fuel cell inside it into a jetpack, another cool feature. Now we all know Captain Scarlet was a lot darker than Thunderbirds, but I also thought it was better. What they did was they put the, I think the controllers, the solenoids into the bodies of the puppets so they could make the heads smaller and they were less caricaturized than the ones in previous shows. The program also had a mega budget too, one and a half million pounds, which is nearly 47,000 pounds for the 32 episodes that they made. Now that's a lot of money in 1967 when you consider that the average house costs just, for, just under 4,000 pounds. Also, Sylvia Anderson was inspired by the Pierre Cardin Cosmos collection when she designed the costumes for the puppets. And I've put a link to the V&A website in the description below if you want to take a look, because they are very, very similar. And also, if you click the YouTube card above, you can see my next Toy Tuesday video, which I'll be posting next week. And if you enjoyed this one as well, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button as well. I'll see you soon for another Toy Tuesday.